Welcome to the Epic Success Podcast. I am your host, Dr. Shannon Irvin. Today's episode is all around what are you looking to to get power to build your business? What are you looking to in order to build, to get results, to grow your business, to scale your business, to make impact? What source are you plugging into for the power to do it? That's what I want to discuss on today's podcast. So here we go. So I'm going to be talking through a scientific and a spiritual lens today because uh, one of the journeys that I've been going on, I'd say in the last three years, but definitely in the last year and a half, is recognizing where the power to create wealth comes from. And truth be told, I got very caught up in the online, I would call it religion, the online doctrine of putting myself at the center and relying upon my own strength, my own wisdom, my own abilities to create wealth. And You know, really, it's not how I started, but I wanted to talk about this on today's podcast because there was a season that I unplugged from God, not in my personal life, not in my off hours life, but in my business. And in talking to a lot of entrepreneurs, we get caught up in this. We might feel called by God and feel, and again, if you're not a Christian or a believer in Christ. I'm going to be using a lot of words from scripture, but I believe these universal principles will serve you as well as where we're getting our power and how one source is unending and the other source is exhausting, right? And so certainly I started my business and my businesses in God's power from his calling, from this desire to help orphans, from this desire to help entrepreneurs, uh, two different businesses, of course, but really relying on vision that was coming from him, really relying on motivation coming from from God himself and would pray a lot and really didn't know my next step until I, I leaned into that. And there's a scripture that says the wisdom or the power to create wealth comes from God. And I don't know about you, but that allows me to just exhale. But something happens when you are in the build of your business. And, you know, we had gotten our business up over the couple million dollar mark and we were building and it was, things were working and things were clicking. And then I got involved in a couple masterminds that weren't aligned with where I was designed, where I was leaning on for power in wisdom. And it really matters who you submit your thinking to, right? Because you will rise to the level of that teacher that says in scripture, right? You will, the student is not greater than the master. The student will rise to the level of the teacher. So if the teacher is relying on ego and uh, pride and look at me, look how amazing I am. Look how I can do this. You can do this too, which is great and motivating. But what I started to do is I stopped plugging in to the power that God wanted to give me in my business, the wisdom that he wanted to give me specifically. I I believe, as you know, in our community, we teach how the brain wires and fires, everything is what you create. And the power of who you are surrounding yourself with is really, really important, especially if you're trying to accomplish something you've never accomplished before and you're in an environment and around an environment in hopes to learn how to do that. And isn't that why we buy courses? Isn't that why we move into those rooms? It's multiple, multiple people that offer strategy, but we want to follow somebody that we trust. And it's just really, really important to understand that the ultimate mastermind, 
the ultimate authority, the ultimate creator of your business is God. And the power to build wealth comes from him. And there's a couple of principles I want to talk about that I've really leaned hard into over the last five, say five years or so, but especially the last three, kind of in the recovery of being in that environment that have proven so powerful in my business. And here's the piece that I really want to share. Because I have a coaching program for entrepreneurs and because I have a coaching certification for coaches, I see the effects of plugged in, being plugged into the wrong source. Here's what some of the effects look like. I was living them and I've seen so many of my clients when they come into our world, start to unplug from them, but it's overwhelm. You know, you're in that leaning on your own authority and your own wisdom and your own source. If you're in overwhelm a lot, exhausted a lot, confused a lot, busy, we don't typically, we're not the, the type typically to be still we might be really busy chasing, you know, buying courses, chasing strategy, but we are chasing ultimately money. So I want to get really real with you here on this podcast. Now, being a girl that believes in Jesus, I've heard all of the mindsets around money, that money is evil, the root of evil, all this stuff, very much, and sadly, based in religion. You know, Jesus never said that. Jesus said that the love of money, the chasing, the putting it first, trying to get the power from money is the root of all evil. Why? Because it robs you of joy. It robs you of life. It, ro it robs you of the ability to impact. Because think about it. If we are loving, meaning pursuing, meaning meaning desiring more than we desire the outcome for our client, we're desiring them to, to say yes and buy, then we've got to get power from money. Money is a tool. But when we look at it to, and we give it the authority, once and here's how I knew I was there, here's how you might know, is like, oh, if I just get to X, Y, Z, whatever that number is, then I will be free. Then I will have peace. Then I'll have hope. Then I'll have happiness. If that, like I was, if that is something you're saying to yourself, I am so glad you're listening today because I want you to listen to these principles today and pull yourself, unplug yourself from the pursuit of money and start to plug into the power to build wealth. And let's dive into that now. Okay, so here's some of the key principles. Number one is acknowledge, right? Acknowledge where wisdom, power, and strength come from. I mean, the creator of the universe could probably help you figure out what is best for you and and I I really lean on the scripture that says that I give you the power to generate wealth. So first of all, just acknowledging that you aren't and I'm not the ultimate source of wisdom and power, that there's something bigger than us, greater than us that has called us to a calling. Yes to have a living, yes, to create freedom, yes, to shift generational wealth, but that's a byproduct. We're called into this calling because we are meant to help people. And that leads me to the second principle. You've probably heard this called the law of sowing and reaping, but I love how it's actually said in scripture where it says, give and it will be given to you back to the point where you cannot contain it, pressed down and overflowing 30, 60, 100 times more than you could ever ask for. So wait, I'll dare call it the secret. We're not pursuing giving. It's all a heart issue, right? 
if we're pursuing in our businesses money being the savior, you will be let down. You will be in overwhelm. You will be exhausted. You will be confused because money is a horrible master. However, if your heart opens and is tender to the giving and trusting the ultimate giver to be his word, which is you will receive more than you could ever ask or imagine, press down to overflowing 30, 60, 100 times more than you could ever ask for. I can ask for, I mean, we're asking for a billion dollar business. We're asking for a billion dollar business. So if that's more than I could ever ask or imagine, holy guacamole, right? So it's a matter of where my heart lies. Do I trust the builder of my wealth? Do I trust the giver of my gifts? Because when I when I really acknowledge, number one, and I start to play in his playbook, which is to give, who, where, who am I called to give to? How can I, and that doesn't mean give for free. Please do not hear me. There's another scripture that says a workman is worth his wages. So I'm not saying to, to give away for free. I'm saying give what you're called to give to the people that you're called to give it to. Think on them. Treat them like you'd want to be treated when you're building your business and your programs, right? Would you want to be hyped up in a launch? and be spoken to for two weeks and then never see that person again? No, but how many people have you been in their programs and that's the case? In fact, when I was in that place before, I was following that and it almost wrecked my business. Give and it will be given to you, press down to overflowing 30, 60, 100 times more than you can ever ask or imagine. And everybody who listens to the Epic Success Podcast, I know you are a visionary. You're somebody who God has given the gift to see, to see into vision, to have the dreams and the desires of your heart to be something big. And this is the secret saying, you know what you can see? I want to give you 30, 60, 100 times more if you put your heart on what matters to me, money the chase of it, looking at it as a savior is an evil taskmaster. But give so you can receive. Not for that purpose, but knowing that that is the law at work in the universe. So number one, you get the power to create wealth from God. Number two, you know, acknowledging God taps you in, plugs you into that power, playing by the 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 manual, the playbook means all I have to focus on is to give like I'd want to be treated to, to do what I was put on this earth to do, to bring glory in that way. Whether you're the best person at your MLM, you're a coach, you're a brand new entrepreneur, but you feel this stirring. That is a God-given stirring meant for you to go use it to help and give to other people. And yes, charge for it. But know that God will be the one that produce the harvest, the build that you're looking for, the 10, 30, 60, 100 times more. Now, now I'm getting into some maybe a little bit more challenging things to think about. When I started to move into me being on the throne instead of God being in the throne of my business, one of the things I had to do is to turn and there's a word we hate using in our current culture, but I needed to submit. And the way I view that word is I needed to give, just like when you go into a mastermind and you know the person in that mastermind's been there, done that, and you submit, you, you sit and listen, take notes, and you try to do those actions. That's what I'm talking about here. I'm, ta I'm not talking about like, Oh, be, you know, a nothing. And, you know, no, God didn't call you to be a nothing, but he did call you to know who provides for you. And that's what I mean. Like it, it's, it's the acknowledgement of 
oh, okay, God, you made dolphins, you made the earth. You guys know I'm crazy about the ocean, right? You made the skies, you make it rain. We we still haven't been able to figure out how to make those things happen when we want them to happen. You've made human beings. So I'm going to not pretend I know more than you. And I am going to be under your leadership, be under your wisdom, be under your plans. And so turning and submitting or being under, meaning like I'm going to plug into the power source and I'm going to listen for what you want my business to do, not what the every other business is doing out there. And that was the game changer for me when we really started to, to hit a hockey stick moment was when I realized I didn't need to be like everybody else. In fact, the creator of the universe created me in a way that meant I wasn't doing it like everybody else. I had many, many people try to talk me into teaching pieces and parts of my certification as strategy to, to grow my business. I prefer to actually serve somebody deeply for an entire year and help them grow their business and get certified. That's why we created our certification the way we do. Why? Because it's exactly what I needed, right? So it's clicking into, that wasn't my wisdom, right? My wisdom is do what the world says, parse it out, you know, create a coach's list building thing, create a coach's uh, um, sales strategy and all of which is in our certification. But once I got under the leadership and authority again in my business of God, the simple question is how, how would I want to be treated if this is the result I wanted to get? So this is a little deeper subject, this one and the next one. And I can tell you this was a tug of war between God and I. And so I want to share this because this is the real walking out of growing a multi-million dollar business. Now, not everybody is a person of faith that has this level of a business. So it's very possible that they really are just in the strive, the strain, the overwhelm, the push, the push, the push, and they don't really sleep because it's hard for them to, right? But one of the things that when I was at that really like recognition of the fact that I really put myself under the leadership of someone that viewed themselves as the ultimate source. And I'd stopped giving in that area of my life, God, that throne, it was in all the rest of my areas of my life, but I'd stopped. And it was in prayer, as I realized this was happening, that I was reading about Abraham and Abraham loved God. And he was, uh, without going for a long period of time, he was very late in life, was blessed with a child that God had promised very early in life. And one of the things God asked him to do was to go up to the top of the mountain and sacrifice this child. And I know that sounds like, Ugh, but he, God wasn't doing that to have him sacrifice the child. God was doing that to test where, where does his leadership al align with? Like, do you trust me? to provide an, a, a suitable, a suitable sacrifice in place of your child? Or are you going to be in figuring it all out on your own and how this isn't logical and all that kind of stuff. So long story short, if you haven't read the story, he walks up to the top of the mountain with the very thing he prayed for his entire life. This amazing man who ended up going on to spoiler alert and uh, grew the nations and was very a uh, powerful man, but he was willing to trust God enough with the thing that mattered most to be under his leadership. And in that walk, in that walking of that, he was willing to lay down the thing that mattered most to him. And at that moment of willingness of, of, of being in the right uh, position to hear God provided a sacrifice, a lamb, then um, they walked down the mountain together. So I'm reading this as I'm in this point, And I really felt like I was, the impression on my heart was, are you willing to lay it down? The way you've created it as of late, are you willing to lay it down? Are you willing to say, I'm, I'm, I can walk away from it tomorrow and have you rebuild it or not rebuild it? Are you willing to lay it down? That's what I heard. I'm not saying you need to hear that, but 
maybe some of you do. Maybe some of you, like me, had made an idol out of your business. Now, I love what I do, and God is on the throne in my business again, and I am in under his authority. And when you get under that authority, he rises you up, right? I'm acknowledging him now, so I'm getting my power, my wisdom from God himself, not from my limited capacity, right? My heart and hopefully my client's listening would agree. And if you do agree, like share this episode, uh, my heart is to give. In fact, up here above in my office, it says your win is when they get to their finish line. In other words, they surpass you. So my win is them surpassing me. That's what I would have wanted. And so I'm creating and I'm giving in my coaching program, in our certification so that entrepreneurs can get unleashed create a year's worth of goals in 67 days and be done with those limiting beliefs. That's the coaching side, the, the coaching business side, the certification side is them teaching people how God wired your brain and the science behind transformation so that they can get transformation for their clients and learn how to grow an actual profitable coaching business, which every other certification doesn't have, but let's get on back. When I give like that, I know I'm, I'm, I know I'm receiving. So I don't need to look to money as the savior. I can look to the creator, the one that gives me the power to create wealth and know that if I align with how he created the playbook, then the receiving is just inevitable and more than I can ever ask or imagine. And I had to get to the place where I was willing to lay it down, willing to make a priority of the power available that was calling me to this to begin with. And I know this isn't normally what I'm talking about. Normally I am talking about, you know, strategy and I'm normally talking about how to train your brain to transform your life and your business and how to, re, you know, remove limiting beliefs, how to build a vision from the brain-based perspective and how to create a magnet or flip that success switch on in your brain. But all of that, doesn't matter unless where its origins come from are from the creator of the brain, the creator of the business, creator of the strategies. And so I just want to share a little bit of the journey that I have been on where I was in completely that way when I started and moved away and kind of put myself and money on the throne and then now have moved back. And, and as that has happened five years ago or so and continuing to walk that out, it really has helped me become connected with my clients in a way that I haven't been seeing possibilities, seeing ideas that were not even on my radar screen because I'm tapped into the power of the one who gives me the power to get well, to create wealth, right? Wealth is created and it's, it's, it's created when we unhook from money as our savior and we connect with giving, with acknowledging and with getting the power to create what it is that we're called to create. I dare say it's the place of peace. It's this interesting place of power, service, giving, doing what you put on the place of the planet to do and peace. That you don't have to be the one to constantly come up with the ideas. Peace that you don't have to be this perfect person to create wealth. That the wealth comes from the giver as we give. I hope this episode has been helpful. The power to build results in a profitable business unleashes when you tap in to the one that put that desire on your heart to begin with. And so that's what I have for you on this very different Epic Success podcast. I just want for you that place of peace, of uh, contentment, and of knowing that you're stepping out in a way that will return 30, 60, 100 times more, and you can trust that. All right, now get out there, change the world. 
Be the creator of your thoughts because those thoughts do create what you're put on the planet to do. That's what I have for you today. I'll see you next week on the Epic Success Podcast. Bye for now.